Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cloud Wars Live. We are exploring the digital revolution and the remarkable companies that are helping to drive the way the world works, lives, uh, recreates, and thinks about what the future is going to be. We're delighted to have with us today uh, Omar Konkobo. He is the IT director at Alta Beauty, where he is uh, in charge of both e-commerce and their digital systems. Omar, welcome to Cloud Wars Live. Thank you. Happy to be here. So, Omar, a couple things got on. On the one hand, we had, uh, you know, just all to finish a, a terrific calendar 2021. You publicly announced revenue growth of about 40%. And Omar, it was interesting because all that happened during a time when the world of retail and consumer packaged goods and logistics and supply chains, all of which your company is deeply involved in, were going through great upheaval. So I wanted to start off to see, if, could you talk a little bit about the vision that you and your Alta colleagues have deployed to help the company navigate, not just sort of get through these changes, but also really thrive in this very different environment? Right. So, yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, it was uh, amazing numbers. Uh, very uh, thankful and delighted to see that we have a lot of beauty enthusiasts out there uh, that are really uh, taking advantage of uh, um, everything Alta has to to, to offer. Um, so, I mean, the strategy, you know, I, I can put it simply, but, you know, I know it is not that simple to achieve that, but again, but the way we get to this, the way we make this happen is to meet our customers, our guests, where they are by right, providing all the technologies, the assortment, the inventory, the newness, you know, anything that attract them. We try to learn from them. We try to see what clicks for them. And we try to make those available for them. I mean, put it simply, this is how we, you know, approach it. Now, the big thing is now, how do you work in the back end? How do you coordinate things in the back to make that happen? That's the heavy lift. But, you know, uh, we've been in it for some time and we understand how it operates and that's how we deliver this to our guests. Well, my, I, I sure would agree with you. It's one of those things, it's, it is fairly simple for you to say, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure it's not so simple to achieve. <laughs> exactly, that's right. <laughs> and especially on my right, whether, you know, it's, it's, it's changed across every industry, the experience people expect to have, but it seems particularly profound in the retail world. And then even within retail, something is fairly intimate as beauty products. So your customers are expecting great digital experiences. They're also expecting great physical experiences in the store. So how did you and your team work together to blend all of those expectations and deliver a seamless experience for your customers that not only delights them at the time, but inspires them to keep coming back to Alta? Right. So that's uh, part of the, the, the strategies and some of the, uh, the behind the scenes things that we put together to, to make this happen. Right. So uh, Alta uh, has an innovation department that's basically day in, day out, you know, scouring the technologies out there, see what is new in beauty, what is, you know, uh, the next uh, big thing that can come and, and, you know, support and help us make uh, our guests happy. And one of those that we are we were able to launch even during the middle of COVID and all those uh, restrictions were, you know, uh, virtual try on. So basically, you walk in the store today, you give it to be sample product and, you know, apply some lipsticks or, you know, just test them and see. But then during COVID or, you know, during the lockdown, uh, there were times when we couldn't make those available because you have too many people touching them, right? But we came up with a different solution, right? You just go in and the associate can hand you an iPad or uh, a, um, um, what do you call that? An iPhone that actually can help you visualize. It takes your, you don't need to take even a selfie, right? But, uh, you know, straight, you can try different products on uh, either, either your eyebrow or different hair colors right there in the store in front of that uh, uh, device, right? So those are the things that we basically pushed out that we brought in. And at the same time, we started working. We know we knew that even though people are locked in and they're in homes, they can't go out, they're still interested. Our beauty enthusiasts, you know, they're always going to love beauty regardless of, you know, where they are, whether they're confined or they're outside. And, you know, and we find ways to keep engaging with them, right? So... 
because things are locked down doesn't mean we don't refresh what is on the site. So on the, the, the site, we do refresh, we change things, we make sure that we have partners that can help us deliver things quickly to those who are guests so they can get things going. And at the same time, we embark on journeys to basically just change and improve our platform, right? So currently we're you know, working on different technologies to actually even bring the store and uh, the physical store and the digital store together to even make it a lot more seamless. And those are things that we're hardly working on currently to continue to engage our guests. Now, uh, Omar, it sounds like it's been a, an amazing journey for the company. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, what you and your team and the whole company has been through over the last year, couple of years has been a lot. And I don't mean to get pushy about it, but, you know, what, what sort of new innovations is Ulta looking at uh, as the retail world gets back into full swing? Well, so, you know, as, as I was sharing earlier, it was more about, uh, you know, definitely bringing, at, at some point, what we want to, to, to make sure uh, our uh, guests are uh, uh, able to, to enjoy from Ulta is merging the, the, the physical store and the, and, the, and the virtual store, right? So I could be on the, the virtual store, uh, buying things or looking through some products, right? And then walk in the store and get welcomed with, you know, hey, you know, these are some few things that we believe you like based on, you know, what you were looking on the, the, the site. Or, hey, these are items that you actually added to your basket on the virtual store. We can, they're available here in the store if you want to purchase them, right? So those are things that we're doing, right? On top of that, I already shared the, the ability to go in and virtually try on things, right? You may want to try four or five different colors. In the past, you try, you wipe out, you try, you wipe out. Now you don't even have to do that, right? It's virtually trying on. And a hair color. You can see how the hair is going to look on you before you even change that color. So all that improving that technology, bringing in even some more, right? you can walk in the store and based on your preference, we can just push some stuff to you and say, okay, you're here today to pick up a specific item and maybe, you know, uh, look at this, you know, uh, you may have some doubts and, you know, there could be some promotions that are there available to you. We don't want to hide those to you. We want to make sure that, hey, you know, hey, there's a promotion actually for you for being, a, you know, one of our valued customers and you can use that in any product, you know. So we're bringing all that together. We continue to invest, to continue to learn, continue to look out there and try to bring in insight. And as, as I shared, our innovation team is working hard to see what else can we continue to bring in the store, right? One thing we're also doing is, you know, rearranging the store setup, you know, how we place the, the items in the store, all this. So basically it's a const constant, continuous improvement, looking at ways to keep our guests engaged and giving them what they're looking for. Yeah, uh, uh, Omar, it sounds great. And I, I, it, it is funny as you, you know, all those changes you've talked about, all of those enhancements and all of those ways you've been uh, enhancing the customer experience at Alta. And, you know, I think back, it was February of 2020, I was talking with the CIO of a big retail company. And she said at that time, a month mm -hmm. before the pandemic really became public, she said, we were having discussions about how much we could charge for mm -hmm. curbside pickup. And, you know, was it 5%? Was it 10%? Was it 12%? And now, you know, a very short time later, it wasn't a luxury. It was an absolute necessity. <laughs> right? the, you know, the idea of charging for it was, yes, yes. Yes. that's how fast things change. So how did yeah. Alta really master the art of uh, curbside pickup? That's a very good question, actually. Our story is really unbelievable. Uh, when the uh, pandemic hit, you won't believe it, but curbside was not existing and our buy online pickup and store bar base was actually being piloted in only a handful of stores. It wasn't anywhere near the full chain. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as the stores were closing and uh, we started getting um, uh, directions about, hey, you know, you can have a curbside, you can have uh, an in-store pickup, but then, you know, the 
<laughs> the the strategy the, the basically the whole thing was like okay so now what do we do we only have office we pilot and only in a handful of stores how do we scale this to the whole chain well luckily we didn't have to actually worry about the back end scaling or technology this is something that actually is basically uh powered by a technology that we really love a lot right and so for us that part was already taken care of the more important thing was now, how do you actually roll out all the different hardware and uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, the, the logistics that the stores would need to actually make it operational. The, the, the call, the piloting was going great. So basically it took us about four weeks to strategize all this, line up our shipping partners and identify all the stores, ship all the devices, ship the packing materials, everything and the communication, the banners and all those. You know, it took us just about four weeks to actually just come up with a strategy and deploy that to the whole chain where now our stores were able to open and provide curbside and install pickup in no time, basically, in the middle of the pandemic. <laughs> so it was just like really, really an amazing feat that we were able to, to pull off. Unbelievable. Omar, it is. And, you know, part of the unbelievable thing, right, is if you, again, uh, before the pandemic, you would have taken, I don't mean Ulta, but most, a lot of companies would have said, hey, we need four weeks just to come up with a plan, come up with a plan. He did it all. In oh, four yes. Weeks. Yeah, in four weeks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, amazing. So, yeah. Omar, you mentioned your uh, Redis and, you know, the friends here who are sponsoring this episode and, uh, you know, their, their uh, incredible focus on data. And I wanted to ask, you know, we hear all the yeah. time about companies say they need to be data driven. What yeah. does that mean to you and your team at Ulta? And how is that helping you to deliver great customer experiences? Well, data driven, I mean, it is it is the key, right? About so basically anything you want to do, any uh, decision you want to make, you definitely want to make sure that there is something that's backing up that decision. It should be something that tells you, hey, because what 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 everything we want to be doing, we want to make sure that it is for our customers. We're working to please them. We're working to provide them data. So not data, but you know, provide them something they want and they're looking for from all that. Right. And what we don't want to do is just go and just push something out there because Omar wanted it, but then you know, a million of customers don't even care about it. Right. So data is key. Data helps us make the right decision. Data helps us to make the right uh, investment. With data, we can be sure that we actually are delivering what our customers are looking for. And it is an important piece of everything we do. And we make sure that all decision and everything we do is uh, backed by data. Yeah, it's not enough to say, hey, Omar wanted to do this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That can never work. No, no fly. No, <laughs> no way. So, uh, Omar, if I could just, you know, ask a little bit more about yeah. the, you know, your relationship with Redis. You shifted yeah. to, you know, Redis Enterprise on Google to manage the steep growth and to create yeah. this enterprise-wide solution. How yeah. has this helped you boost efficiencies? And also, again, I got to keep coming back that 40% growth in 2021. It really stands out. How did all that work together? Right. So, so um, I mean, the, 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 the integrity, I mean, the Redis, what Redis is actually doing for, I can take a whole day explaining uh, how this is done and the benefit that it, it, it provides to us, right? So if you take, for instance, the buffers or the curbside that I was talking about, the whole, the, the, the technology behind it is mostly one of these technologies powering our feature that is, is, is Redis, right? One good example you shared is, you know, our cloud. And those are the, the new technology I was talking about that we actually doing, working on to improve. We've seen what Redis is capable of. Now in this new platform that we're building, we're making sure that we're leveraging the right places, right? So in, in, in our current implementation, everything is physical, everything is built in house. In the cloud, as we go to GCP, one thing we're leveraging is the Redis Lab, the you know, SaaS offering of it where 
we don't have to be spending time building all this server, this hardware, and spinning up uh, a Redis instance. We leverage the cloud offering that's already available to us. Saves us a lot of time, right? And based on our current experience with our old system, we noticed that there are a lot of areas that we can use Redis to, you know, uh, upgrade some efficiencies and reduce the need for us to go and solution that, right? So a lot of those and the play roles in how we manage inventory. How do we actually use Redis to reduce our cost of actually calling other third parties, right? That's a lot of savings, unbelievable savings by just leveraging Redis to handle some data for us and not be calling somebody that charges us for each time we call them, right? So all this is, I mean, it's really amazing how we've been able to leverage, right? Not only to power the system, not only to make it very fast, not only to improve our operational efficiency, but also reduce our cost of operating our whole technology platform. Well, Omar, I think that's a great, uh, you know, explanation of how uh, Redis was able to get in there and help you achieve the pretty ambitious goals you had and to execute through some very challenging times. But also, I wonder, I'm, I'm always uh, intrigued by, you know, uh, an executive like you, you must have dozens or hundreds of tech vendors trying to get your attention, especially <laughs> a great company like Alta. What stood out in your mind about what Redis said or what they said they could do for you that made them uh, different from others? That's, that's a good question, actually. The 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 hub that basically and and before we even considered Redis, but we looked at a gazillion of solutions out there. Mm-hmm. Some of them coming with all the bells and whistles and the complex implementation, all these servers that you need to buy to set them up and be highly available so that you're you know in your know, short term uh, in memory data is sitting somewhere making it available for, I mean, it was so kind of, with Redis, the open source nature of it is basically what saved the day because we were able to say, well, what if I paid all these million for this system and it doesn't work, right? And I don't really have like a forever budget to spin up a big proof of concept and, you know, here's an open source solution Let's bring that open source solution and let's see how it goes. And it worked perfect for what we needed. It worked perfect for our use case. And we're like, you know what? Let's get the power behind it to support us. Then we went enterprise, right? So that's been the, the key here. That's been the approach, the, the one factor that actually basically just got us to, to, to pick Redis, right? Not only was simple to get going without a lot of you know noise behind it or you know giving us some price tag that makes your boss scream at you and say what are you thinking you know <laughs> and then the moment we decide to proceed the help was amazing you know the support team was really there to get us going in no time so that's basically how we, we got there all right. All right. And then, um, Omar, finally, you know, you uh, I, I love that title, IT Director for E-Commerce <laughs> Digital Systems. You're right in the middle of, you know, all <laughs> these profound changes. Um, so you, you've, you've had these big successes coming up, but now as the company moves forward and your customers are going to continue to expect more, can you talk about what's next on your, your list of big ideas and big things to achieve? <laughs> Yeah, you know, de- definitely. I mean, yeah, to your point, I mean, we have to, to continue to grow. I mean, if you look at uh, the Alta, and as you shared, even though we have this 40% growth, Alta is about the $8 billion company, right? That's publicly known. That. And if you look at the whole beauty industry, it is like hundreds of billions. So yeah. you can see where we are. We're not even like, you know, so we still have plenty of room to grow, a lot of opportunities, right? And, you know, and beauty is a lot of, you know, not technologies, but like different providers out there trying to, you know, uh, jump into the beauty market and others. So for us, standing out and keeping the momentum is very important to us, right? So those new technologies that we're working on, right? These innovation teams that we have doing some, you know, research and see what is going to help us. For instance, one, 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 one thing that we're actually targeting and chasing is 
personalization. We want to know you better, but we don't want you to come to our site and, you know, you look for something and whatever all my scene is what we push over to you. I mean, come on, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Bob and Omar are totally different, right? You know, we could have one or two things in common, but you may be looking for something that's different from what I'm looking. And we want to make that relevant. We want to make sure that when you come to us, we're treating you as you, not, you know, as, you know, the whole. And those are the things that we're building. Like this new technology platform that we're building is going to come and empower this and bring all of our omni-channel solution into one place, as I was talking initially about merging physical and digital so that you're in the store and you basically just like you still in person inside the digital store, right? So so those are things that we're working on. We're pushing hard, we're looking, we're getting the data as I was sharing. We're basically pulling the data and reading through the data and trying to come up with the ideas to help us go in the direction that we should be going and help us invest in the technologies that we need to invest to continue that growth. Yeah, it's it's very exciting, Omar. I really enjoyed this, but Omar, can I ask before you go, yeah, uh, I was thinking back to your point about the, you know, the uh, curbside pickup, start yeah. to finish, four weeks. Did you get any sleep over those four weeks? <laughs> well, the good news is, it, yeah, the, the straight answer is like, yes, part of it. You know, I did get some sleep. And the reason why I was able to get some sleep is that the, on the technology side, we built everything ready to go. So as we're expanding to all these gazillion of stores, we didn't really have to go and change anything. Redis was ready to support all this. And oh, wow, you know, pun intended, Redis was ready. So, so it was ready to support everything. We didn't even have to add additional capacity and everything. It scaled perfectly and handled this. But obviously, you know, but we still have to keep an eye to make sure that nothing is going to break, right? That's where the, the sleepless nights was. Uh, what is going to break? What is going to break? I mean, I. Hundred percent sure I did everything right, but you can never be like very too sure. Yeah, you still always have to keep an eye to make sure that things are you know stable and running. And luckily for us, it's, it it has been, or maybe because we did the right thing, we didn't have to worry much about it. Yeah, I it doesn't sound like luck played a real big role there. No, uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Push it up. Well, Omar, this has really been fascinating. Thank you so much you. for taking the time to explain, you know, what uh, the last couple of years at Alta Beauty have been like, you know, from your side as head of uh, IT systems, uh, uh, you know, for e-commerce and digital yeah. systems, yeah. and your, your just uh, relentless focus on the customers comes through loud and clear and great experience. So really enjoyed the conversation, Omar. Thank you. Same here. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, glad to be able to share this with um, everybody. Appreciate it. Great. And to folks, you in the audience, thank you so much for being with us. This episode was brought to you by Redis. And uh, we're delighted to be able to share this story of how Redis worked with Alta to help drive some remarkable uh, business outcomes. Thanks for being with us. And we'll see you next time.